Hello, my very aftercare friends. Does this sound like anybody you know? Hmm, let's see. Somebody uh, had bariatric surgery or they lost a bunch of weight on their own or they are on GLPs and they're losing that weight and life is great. And then they get down to a reasonable weight and they are happy and they are thrilled and they are feeling good and they're living their best life. And whoa, all of a sudden they quit doing the things it took to lose the weight and they quit doing the things it takes to maintain weight loss. And before you know it, they've gained their weight back. I'll bet you do know somebody like that. And it may even be you. Well, I hope not. But tonight on this episode, we are going to talk about, are you making your health and wellness a priority? Not just at the beginning, if it's a weight loss thing we're talking about or whatever it happens to be, but throughout the journey and throughout your life. So let's get started. Here's what we're going to be talking about in this episode. We're going to be talking about priorities. And because this is a weight loss podcast, we're going to say, what does that look like when it comes to your health and wellness? What are your priorities when it comes to your health and wellness specifically regarding losing the weight and keeping the weight off? Secondly, in the Berry Aftercare program, which if you're not familiar with the Berry Aftercare program, it is a full online program where we discuss specifically what to do, how to keep that weight off and what to do with the things that are interfering with your being able to do that. So if you're interested in the Berry Aftercare program, check it out at www.berryaftercare.com. Daily information, all kinds of great things. But in the Berry Aftercare program, we have a word of the year, which is accountability, but we also have words for each week. So we're starting March and the word for the month of March is priority. And the supporting words for priority are choices, values, and significance. So we're going to take these words tonight. We're going to talk about how these words fit in with prioritizing your health and wellness. Next, we're going to talk about hmm, something that you better put your seatbelt on for because this is where I get real, friends. This is where I get fair and firm. We're going to talk about weight loss versus weight maintenance. And I'll give you a little clue. This is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where we are going to know, and everybody in your life is going to know whether the weight loss and a healthy lifestyle overall are truly a priority to you because your choices, the actions that you take that either go with that value of living a healthy lifestyle or go against that healthy lifestyle are going to share how significant a uh, priority your health and wellness are. Ooh, that's going to be a little tough section. So wait just a while. We'll get there, but it's a good one. And you're going to learn a lot about yourselves there. And finally, we're going to talk about a special invite for you and anybody you want to bring with you to a free online chat. It's called, do you define your worth by your weight? And this is going to be with myself and Laura uh, Preston. So stay tuned for details. I'll provide details about that free chat online throughout tonight's session. So let's start with the word priority and talk about what it actually looks like when you do prioritize your health, when you do prioritize your wellness. So prioritizing means, and you know this, it means treating something like it's more important than other things. So when we're talking about your health, we're talking about your wellness, you prioritize that. That goes to the top of the list or one of the top things in your list of what's important to me. And that's going to take precedence over some other things. We'll give some examples in just a minute. Let's say you're trying to get out of credit card debt. Some of you have been there. You prioritize paying your credit card debt first before you pay your other bills. Maybe your kid has a birthday party coming up and your friend wants to have coffee. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're going to prioritize your child's birthday over having coffee with your friend. So priority means treating something, your health, your wellness, you're paying off your debt, your child's birthday, over 
other things in your life. And when you are prioritizing your health and your wellness, here's what it looks like. So health basically means, you know, being free from illness or injury. And it also includes your physical and your mental condition. Now, we can't always be free from these things, but to the extent that we can have control or influence over our health and mental well-being. So, for example, (laughs) I live a pretty healthy lifestyle, generally speaking. I exercise very regularly. I eat very healthy for the most part, not perfectly. I don't smoke. I do not drink any alcohol. I drink a ton of water. So I live a pretty healthy lifestyle. However, I have high blood pressure, long family history, a lot of genetics for high blood pressure. I also have some heart issues, long family history of heart issues. So to the extent that I can influence my health, I do put forth that effort. I prioritize my health in those ways. So I can't have any influence or control over my genetics. But if I weren't living a healthy lifestyle, my health would probably be far worse than it is right now. And it's not bad at all, actually. I mean, these are controllable things with care by the physicians and being my own, you know, my own advocate and getting getting the treatments that I need. So When you prioritize your health, what you do is you put it at the top of the list. And we'll talk about what that looks like on a day-to-day basis in just a second. But wellness is more the act of practicing the healthy habits. Check it out, friends. You've heard this before on a daily basis because you want to turn these healthy habits into just that habits, not something you constantly have to think about. Now, if you're just starting an exercise program, if you're just starting a weight loss program, yeah, you have to put a lot more effort into things until they become habitual. Just like your parents had to teach you to brush your teeth in the morning and before you go to bed and you had to learn to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom, those things become habitual. You don't think about those things anymore. You take your car keys with you when you go to the car, unless you're like me and forget them half the time. So it's the act, wellness is the act of practicing the healthy habits day in and day out so that you can achieve this good health, this physical health, this mental health, which means I go to the therapist if I need to. I talk to people about my friend or my, I talk to my friends about what's going on with me. I share my feelings. So instead of just surviving life or existing in life, you're able to thrive. Now think about this in terms of your weight loss journey. I'm going to come back to it, but don't most people lose weight so they can improve their health? Don't most people want to lose weight so they can have a better quality of life? Well, I'm going to say, yeah, because I hear it day in and day out and day in and day out for the last 18 years, as I've done these pre-surgical evaluations, that's what people tell me they want. So they're verbalizing that this is a priority. Does that always follow through after the surgery? Dun, dun, dun. You tell me. All right. So the prioritizing is basically the doing, the doing of the things it takes to maintain good health and have an overall wellness attitude, living a healthy lifestyle. So what's it look like? If you're prioritizing your health and wellness, and you've done this before, and maybe you're continuing this, but this is what it looks like. Or think about somebody you know who does prioritize their health, who does prioritize their wellness. They are working to develop healthy habits or they're living out the healthy habits they've already established. So when it comes to weight loss, regardless if you lose weight through diet and exercise or have weight loss surgery procedure or if you um, are using GLPs, if you're doing, um, you know, Jenny Craig or Weight Watchers or whatever you're doing, however one chooses to lose the weight, the people who are prioritizing their weight loss, they're eating well. Absolutely. Not 100% of the time, but the majority of the time, they're putting healthy foods in their bodies at healthy portion sizes. You know this. You've done it and or you're doing it. They exercise, not once a month, 
<laughs> but on a fairly regular basis. It's a part of their life. They prioritize it, meaning I'm going to go for a 10 minute walk rather than scroll through my phone for 10 minutes, or I'm going to listen to something on my phone while I take that 10 minute walk and get both of those things accomplished. I used to read. I would take note cards with me when I was studying. And when I was in my PhD program, I would take note cards and I would read them while I walked around the track and I could keep track of the lanes that were chalked out in white, you know, through my peripheral vision. But I studied while I walked. So you can do this, but it's got to be a priority. So if your priority really isn't to do the exercise on a regular basis, you find 101 excuses not to. It's too cold out. It's too hot out. It's too windy out. It's too sunny out. It's too rainy out. You don't have to exercise outdoor, my friends. You can do a video online or you can sit in a chair and do some chair exercises, whatever. But those people who are prioritizing their health and wellness are doing these things. They're not just talking about them. So as we go through this, hint, hint, think about, are you talking about doing these things or are you doing these things? And those who truly prioritize, this is at the top of my list of what's important to me. They're doing the things. So eating well, exercising, drinking water, they have forms of accountability. We've talked a lot about that in prior episodes and they have support. Now they don't just have any old support. They have support from people who like me are going to say, I appreciate the efforts that you're putting in, but I want to share with you that I'm seeing you make excuses when it comes to exercise or whatever it is. They're going to be firm and fair with you. They're not going to pat you on the back and say, I know it's so hard. Let's go out and, you know, let's go out to the ice cream place. No, that is not support, my friends. That is enabling. That is walking you down the unhealthy path. Is that where you want to go? So you got to look at what kind of support you have in your life. And the other thing that people who are prioritizing their health and wellness, because remember, this isn't just about physical health. It's about your mental health as well. It's about your spiritual health. It's about your relationship health. So they learn information. You learn information like if you're always fighting with your best friend, you know, how do I change my communication style? Or if you're always arguing with your parent, looking into family dynamics and how to create better dynamics with your parents. It's listening to podcasts on, you know, how to be autonomous, meaning I'm going to do this even if nobody else does. Laura Preston and I talk a lot about listening to the Mel Robbins podcast because that woman is going to give it to you firm and fair, just kind of like I do. And sometimes she's even firmer than I am and she uses a lot of cuss words. So I try not to do that on this podcast, but she's going to tell you like it is. And I'm going to tell you like it is not because I'm a hard ASS, but because I know that without hearing the firm and fair reality, it's too easy to get caught up in the, the compassion, except for yourself. Cause most people don't have a lot of that. But if I'm on here going, you know, I know it's really, really, really hard. And, oh, you know, just, you know, do it if you can. That's not going to help you. What I will say fairly is I do know this is hard. I know it's really hard to establish healthy habits. It takes a long time. It takes a lot of effort. It takes a lot of motivation. It takes a lot of determination. It takes a lot of prioritizing. But I also know you can do it. And I also know that if you don't do it, you ain't going to get the results that you want. And that is the end of the story and the bottom line. So I'm going to be compassionate with you all day long in terms of this is hard. But I'm also going to say, do you want it or don't you? And if you do, and you're not, it's not coming to you easily, then what are you doing to get the help you need? Other things that people who prioritize their health and wellness do are, A, they talk, well, what I just said, they develop the healthy habits behaviorally, and then they establish a routine. So I make a plan. When am I going to exercise? Not just, mm, think I'll exercise. Maybe I'll, you know, no, 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 no. We have a plan. I will walk at my break at lunch for 10 minutes and I will um, do weightlifting for 10 minutes um, while I'm watching television at night and I will do um, 10 squats and two planks before I go to bed. Whatever it is, you have a routine, you plug it into your routine 
and then you follow through. And for those of you who may just be starting, of course, you're not going to go out there if you're, you know, you're, you're overweight to the point that it hurts to move, that would not be smart because you'll overdo it and you won't want to do it anymore. Start small, start with five minutes, start with two minutes. It doesn't matter, but you've got to build it into your routine and say, this is when I'm going to do it. You establish that routine. People who prioritize like, I'm um, talking the talk and walking the walk. They're the people who practice things like meditation or they practice relaxation or deep breathing. They take some quiet time for themselves in the middle of the day, even if it's one minute, even if it's when they go to the bathroom, you can sit on the toilet and do some deep breathing. You incorporate this, you prioritize it, and you implement it. You do the doing. Maybe you pray, maybe you take some time at the beginning and the end of the day to pray. But people who practice health and wellness take time to slow it down. Now, this is something that I will say I have struggled with my entire life. And just in the last year or so, I've been getting better at it and making it more of a priority. And that's another thing. People who practice and live a healthy life and have a wellness mindset, they prioritize themselves. And I hear it every day and you hear it every day and you probably say it once or twice a week, oh, I got to do everything for everybody else. You know, I never take time for myself. And guess what happens? You don't take care of yourself. And then guess what happens? You have consequences for not taking care of yourself. I recently did this and there were consequences for not taking care of myself. <laughs> um, I'll tell you the short version. I um, was on a medication that it has a potentially serious side effect. And I only got bits and pieces of the side effects from the doctor and the uh, pharmacist. And I did ask. And one of the really bad uh, side effects is Achilles tendon ruptures. So I was like, oh, that's not a good one. So I listened to what they had to say. The other one, the pharmacist told me it can be bad on your stomach. So I got a probiotic to take with it. So I hopefully wouldn't have, you know, any of those things. And if I felt Achilles tendon pain, then of course I would quit taking the medicine, da, 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 da. I didn't do a thorough enough uh, check because I didn't check to learn that any kind of strenuous exercise, and I'm not a strenuous exerciser. My exercise routine consists of a three-mile walk, four to five days a week, and some yoga. I don't consider that strenuous for myself. Well, I went skiing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I went skiing with my grandkids, and even though it wasn't intense, it triggered a reaction, not in my Achilles tendons, but in tendons in my knees and my shoulders. And the consequences have been a great deal of pain. And now I'm not able to exercise because I have to repair my tendons. So I'm starting physical therapy, but that's on me. That is on me because I didn't, I didn't prioritize my health. And I had a hunch that I shouldn't ski, so I didn't listen to myself. So there were consequences, right? So I didn't prioritize myself and now I'm dealing with the consequences. Same with your health and your weight. If you don't prioritize yourself and do the things it takes to keep weight off or lose the weight, then the consequences are going to be you don't lose the weight or you regain the weight. So this is a serious, serious business. So these words that we're talking about, priority, the choices, which we're going to get to in a minute, the values, the significance, it's a big deal because your health is a big deal. Your wellness is a huge deal. So do you want to exist in life or do you want to live and thrive and flourish in life? Well, I want to flourish. Now, none of us are going to do it perfectly, but we can work on it. So back to the people who prioritize their health and wellness. We talked about their healthy habits. We talked about establishing this routine. So part of the routine is making the plan. Part of it is practicing relaxation types of things. Part of it is uh, making yourself a priority. Sometimes it's asking for help. I'm struggling with following through. Would you help me? Maybe it's I'm struggling with some depression. 
go to a therapist, go to a psychologist. I'm struggling with accountability, hire a life coach. Also, they prioritize sleep because as you know, sleep is becoming more and more um, researched and there's so much more information about the lack of sleep and what sleep deprivation causes, big deals. And because we're talking not just about your physical health, but also your emotional health, see a mental health person if you need to. Other kinds of routines for people who live a healthy lifestyle and engage in wellness practices are practicing gratitude. How often do you talk about gratitude? This is huge for me. So I didn't tell you that when we were skiing, my husband also broke his leg. So this last week, my husband broke his leg and my tendons have kind of collapsed. And so both of us, while we're a little bit dismayed and are definitely having some struggles, have said day after day, it could be a lot worse. I'm so grateful for the support we have, for the friends we have, for the quality of life we have, for the ability to help one another and ask for help from others. So practicing gratitude is a big thing. We could piss and moan, right? Poor me, poor me, oh, why me? No, what we say is why not me? Why not me? I'm not immune to health issues, why not me? Why not my husband be the one to break his leg? Why not? I mean, we're just all of us, everyday normal people. So if you're stuck in the mindset of, well, why me? Why did I have to suffer with the disease of obesity? Well, it could be worse, my friends. I know you think that's an impossibility, but do some research. It could be worse. I don't even want to go into, but you can think of things that would be worse because you have the ability to do something about it not to the point where you might get down to the BMI chart, but to the ability that you have a healthier lifestyle, to the ability that you have greater wellness in your life so that you're not just existing. You and I, with the health issues I'm dealing with and the ones related to your obesity, you have some influence, not complete, just like I don't have complete influence over my health. Genetics affect your disease genetics affect my diseases. I can't control that, but I can control what I eat. I can control whether I exercise. I can control whether I take some time to slow down and meditate. I can control whether I practice gratitude and I can control which the next thing, which is nurture your spirit. That may mean spending time with friends. That may mean sitting outside. Being outside is really therapeutic for a lot of people. It may be praying. It may be joining, you know, groups of other spiritually minded people, whatever that means to you. So you've got to develop some routines that support and promote your physical health and your mental health. Okay. So let's talk about some of these other words as they relate to living a life of health and wellness, not just talking about it but doing it. So like I said, our word for the month in Barry Aftercare is priority. Are you truly prioritizing your health? Are you doing the doing? Are you just talking about it? You giving it lip service? Are you saying, oh yeah, I really, really want this, but you're making excuses for everything under the sun when it comes to doing it? That's not really a priority then. Okay. So our supporting words are choices, values, and significance. And how do these words fit in with prioritizing your health and wellness. Well, let's start with choices. What choices do you make? You, 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 yourself, and you. Like me, myself, and I, you, you, and you. What choices do you make regarding your health and wellness? Again, do you practice gratitude or you piss and moan all the time? Do you follow up with healthcare? Meaning, do you get your routine physicals? I know it might be embarrassing or you might be ashamed or you might say, I don't want to get yelled at because of my weight. This is your health, my friends. This is your health. Do you get your physical, your annual physical and any other annual exams that you need? Do you get an eye exam? Do you get an ear exam? Do you get whatever exam you need? Do you go to your doctor when something's wrong? Or do you be like, oh, I don't want to know. That is not going to help you. The earlier we can catch things, (laughs) the better our options for treating them are. 
do you, you know, go along and you go to your physicals, but you develop a lump under your armpit and you're like, eh, it'll go away. Get it checked. Don't be that person. This is being a person who takes initiative, who sets out to prioritize their health. If you prioritize your health, then you're going to get the care that you need. And do you advocate for yourself? So let me tell you some stuff about this recent health things that I've been going through. So I've had, this all started with a lung issue, I thought. So I had a lung issue. I, I felt like I had an infection in my lung because I got a series of bronchitis in 2023, no, 2022. And so f- from like January, 2023, all the way through the year, I just felt like something wasn't right. So I finally made an appointment with a pulmonologist. And I said, listen, something's not right. I can feel it. You've got to be your own advocate. Well, let's just let it sit for about six months and see how it goes. Okay, I will do that if you don't think anything's really amiss here. She did some scans. There was nothing major going on. So six months goes by and we do the scans again. Nothing's changed, but I said, something's not right. I want something done. So she said, okay. That followed up with a pulmonary function test, which led to her finding some heart issues. Well, that was a surprise to me. But I also said, I want a bronchoscopy because I feel like there's an infection in my lungs. So I advocated for myself. I advocated, I advocated. And sure enough, I had an infection in my lungs, which led to the medicine (laughs) that led to the side effect. Anyway, in the meantime, she sent me to a cardiologist, which yielded some pretty darn important results and led to some additional testing that I'm having done. Again, I had a physician tell me one time that my chances of a cardiac incident were 1% based on my lifestyle. She didn't ask me about my heredity. And this doctor said, Based on your lifestyle, that's probably true. But given your heredity, that's why we're seeing these issues. So again, be your own advocate. If I hadn't been an advocate to myself with that lung doctor, she wouldn't have found the heart issues and I wouldn't have been to the heart doctor. And who knows where that might have led. Be your own advocate. You know your body better than somebody else. I'll tell you another example. My sister went to the emergency room three times a couple of years ago because she had something going on. She felt like it was her lungs or her heart or something. And she went and they checked her out and they sent her home. She came back, I don't know how how long later, a couple days or whatever. She's like, nope, go on home. The third time she came, they were going to send her home. And she said, I am not leaving. There is something not right here. They're like, well, you do want us to do an x-ray? She's like, yes, I want you to do an x-ray. So they take the x-ray, she she leaves and they said, we'll follow up if anything comes up. They called her and said, go straight to the ER. She had pulmonary embolism. So we have to advocate for ourselves. If you know something's going on, you insist that you get the help that you need. All right? So advocate for yourself. Choices. And if you don't feel able to advocate for yourself, find somebody who will go with you and advocate for you because that is a difficult thing to do if you don't have a lot of self-esteem or a lot of self-worth or a lot of confidence or a lot of experience in that area. So ask somebody to help you. Choices. What food choices do you make? Do you make choices that coincide with what you say your priority is? My health is my priority. That doesn't mean eating perfectly. It means eating mostly well, most of the time, healthy foods, healthy portion sizes. Okay. Do you make healthy food choices? Do you make the choice to move your body. And it doesn't have to be the way other people do. You might like to just freestyle dance. Did you ever see the movie, um, oh, House, oh, what the heck was it? It had Goldie Hawn and (laughs) Steve Martin in it. And um, it was one of my favorite, I think it's called House Sitting, House Sitter. Anyway, old movie. But Goldie Hawn (laughs) goes to this class where she's doing this freestyle dance and it made me laugh so hard I about peed my pants. 
You can do freestyle dancing in your living room. You can do formal, you know, jogging, or you can do yoga, or you can do light weight lifting. You can go to the gym. You can do cheer yoga. You can do online videos at home. I don't care what you do, but what are your choices? Is it to do something consistently or not do it at all? If you say your health is a priority and you're not exercising, I'm going to question you about that priority because you're talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk, my friend. What about finding support, accountability, listening to podcasts, reading books, getting additional information on the areas where you struggle? Are you doing that? If not, again, I'm going to say to you, is this really a priority to you or are you just blowing smoke up wherever you blow smoke? All right. So choices. One of our important words, what are your choices when it comes to your health and your wellness? What about values? What do you value in life? What do you say is important to you? What are your guiding principles that inform your decisions? Let me tell you what that means. So if I say, I want to be a person who manages their health to the best of my ability, and I want to live a lifestyle of wellness. I want to just be a healthy person, mentally, physically, spiritually, whatever it is. I value that. Then my choices, are they in line with my values? So if I say that I value health and I make it a priority, but I don't eat well, or I don't exercise, or I don't sleep much, or I don't drink any water, my actions, my choices of behavior are not in line with my values. So that's going to lead me away from what I'm telling people is my priority. What I'm telling people is important to me. So that's why we can look at what you say is important to you and we can look at your actions and we can know either they're full of crap and they're just saying that this is a priority or there's something else in the way. And I'm going to talk about that something else in just a second. But first, you need to ask yourself, am I all talk and no action? You say you value your health, but you don't take care of it. I would have to question your value, your, your alignment to your values. You say that you value your partner, but you don't spend any time with them. You talk snotty to them. You ignore their requests for doing things with you or for helping them out. You say that's important, but your behavior doesn't reflect it. Maybe you say you really, oh my gosh, getting my degree is a oh, top priority for me. It's so important. I value education so, so, so much. Are you, are you in school? Oh, no, no, no. I'm too busy for that. Or I just, you know, I'm going to, you know, someday I'll, you know, you can someday I'll forever. You can move to someday aisle. Someday I'll exercise. Someday I'll go back to school. Someday I'll, well, it might be too late because if you someday aisle, you might end up with some significant problems before then and not get the opportunity to get to someday. All right. So your values are your actions lining up with your values. Significance. Significance means this is worth my attention. This is worth my attention, the meaning I find in something. So all of these words clearly are related, priority, value, significance, and either your choices and your behavior align with or support those things that you say you are, that are important or they don't. So again, when it comes to significance, is your health worthy of your attention in your life, not just if you're suffering some major issue, but what about day to day to day? So many times in so many areas of our life, we don't pay attention. We don't do the actions. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, my doctor said, if I don't lose 30 pounds, I'm going to die from diabetes. Or my doctor said, if I don't quit drinking, my liver is shot. Or if I don't turn this next assignment in, I fail out. Or if I keep being late for work and don't start showing up on time, I lose my job. Consequences. Consequences. If something is of significance to you, you tend to it. Unless, and we'll get to that unless in just a minute. So the bottom line here, 
Bottom line, friends, if your health is truly a top priority in your life, if you sincerely value your health and your overall wellness, if your health is worthy of your attention every single day, then you know what your life would look like. Find somebody in your life. Think about somebody right now who like really prioritizes their health and wellness. And think about what you see them doing, how you see them acting, what you see them doing as far as choices. What are you doing? What are you doing? Now, here's where I hear it. And I hear it every day. And I'll tell you what. While I empathize with it, I'm not going to go there for too long with anybody. Oh my God, it's so hard. But Connie, it's so hard. Well, hell yes, it's hard. It is hard. I know it's hard. I know it's hard. I've done hard things in my life. You've done hard things in your life. You are capable of doing hard things in your life. Absolutely, without a doubt, you are capable. So I will grant you it is not easy, but I will not support you in whining. I will not support you in living in a cesspool of misery. If you want to whine, if you want to live in the yeah, but it, the yeah, but land, yeah, but it's hard. Go there. You'll find plenty of company. But if you want to change your life, join in with the people who are working hard to change their life. Look at the people around you because we, um, you know, we're like the people in our lives. So if you're, if you're surrounded and your best friends are a bunch of Wendy whiners who talk about, but don't do, you need to find some people who are doers because you can drown or you can do. And I choose not to drown in misery. Sure. I'm going to go there. Do you think my husband and I haven't had moments this last week where he's on crutches and a walker with his leg in a immobilizer and I'm hobbling around with my knees bent because I can't straighten them because my tendons are so sore. Do you think we haven't had moments like, what the heck? And yet we always resort to, it could be worse. We're going to make the most of this. We're going to have a positive attitude about this. This will change and it will improve. And we have to do our part to get there. So yeah, take a few minutes. I talked to a woman today, literally today, and this woman just had a big disappointment in her life that affected all areas of her life. So the timing wasn't right to say, well, get on with it, girl, pick yourself up by the bootstraps. Uh uh. I said, you know what? You're grieving and the grief has to be tended to. And the difficulty of doing difficult things has to be tended to. So I gave her a four week plan. This week, I just want you to write down all the miseries every day. Make a whole new list. Start from scratch because you may come up with more every day. Just write down all the things that are so miserable about this situation. Next week, I want you to still make that list, but I want you to add a few things that you're grateful for in your life. The week after that, I want you to write a whole bunch of things that you're grateful for and a couple of the things that kind of kind of stink about this situation. And the fourth week, I want you to do nothing but gratitudes because we have to give loss and frustration and sadness and grief its due. We can't just skate over it. We got to work through it, but we can't live there. We cannot mire in that misery. We cannot swim in that cesspool forever, but a lot of people do and they don't end up living what they say they want to live, a life of health and wellness to the extent that they can influence it. So of course it's hard. And there's a huge issue, not just one, there are several, but it kind of boils down to something that we're going to talk about here. And that's the thing that Laura and I are going to talk about in our free online chat, which by the way, is next week on March 5th, March 5th, 2024. So if you listen to this after that, you're going to miss it. But It's March 5th, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time, and I'll give you more details in just a minute. But of course, it's not easy to live a healthy lifestyle. It takes a lot of work to develop those habits. 
But the issue that often prevents a person from living according to or acting in a way that demonstrates their health, that their health is a priority is critical. And what that is, is oftentimes a lack of self-worth. And let me tell you this, if you don't value yourself, if you don't think you have as much worth as every other human being on the planet, your behavior is going to reflect that. Now, does that mean that everybody who's not following through with the healthy behaviors for a healthy lifestyle, if that's what they want, have low self-worth? Not everybody, probably not. But I'm going to say for a lot of people it is, or it might mean that you're really, that health isn't really a priority to you. You're just saying it is because maybe it's the cool thing to say. So either your health really isn't a priority. It's not of top value to you. It's not that significant to you because your choices are not healthy or, and, and, or there's a serious struggle with lack of self-worth and that will impede your progress every single time. So we're going to talk about that. Laura and I, in our free online chat with Laura and Connie, I'll give you the rest of the details in just a minute. Now I'm going to talk about, let's get real here, friends. Let's get real. Here's the firm part of my message. We're going to get real about weight loss versus weight maintenance. And I know this to be factual because I've lived this for the last 18 years in my career. So people will come for their pre-surgical evaluation. And this is true whether you're having surgery or losing weight by another route, which we'll talk about in one second. But if you're having weight loss surgery, I know from talking to thousands of patients that they tell me what they want is to lose the weight for improved health and a better quality of life. Now, after surgery, we often find a whole different picture. Before surgery, you've got to do a lot of things. It is a priority. It is of significance. Your choices reflect that because you've got to go through a whole lot to get to the point of even having the surgery. Pre-surgical psyche bell, nutrition classes, consultation with the doctor, clearances from God knows how many doctors, sleep studies, all the things. But you do it because it's a priority. I want the surgery. And you're telling me, and some of you mean it, you want a healthier life, you want to get the weight off, you want to live healthier, you want to be free of disease, et cetera, et cetera. I think everybody means it when they say it. But when it comes to keeping that weight off, that's where we're going to separate the wheat from the chaff. Is that a saying? I don't even really know what that means. But <laughs> we're going to find out who's zooming who here. Were you saying that and do you mean it even after you lose the weight? Or is it just like, hallelujah, I just wanted to get this weight off and look at me now. That doesn't usually last long because the people, whether you lose your weight on GLPs, whether you lose your weight on a medical weight loss program, whether you lose your weight on um, a fad diet, a supervised diet, whatever, or you have weight loss surgery, you've got to maintain the weight loss. Either you stay on GLPs forever and even if you do, you need to develop that healthy weight, uh, healthy lifestyle. But if you go off of those GLPs, unless you have invested your time, unless you have prioritized developing that healthy lifestyle, then you'll gain the weight back. If you have the weight loss surgery and you don't stay invested, you don't prioritize the actions, the choices, the values, the significance of following through with your values of living a healthy life and having a better quality of life. If you lose the weight and that's really what you wanted and you quit living the lifestyle, you're going to gain your weight back. And that's the truth. That is the bottom line, the truth. So however you lose that weight, the long-term lifestyle that you develop following the weight loss, that's going to demonstrate what your priorities are. And let me repeat that. How you live your life after the weight loss, after that weight comes off, that's going to determine, that's going to show me, show you, and show others how important that really is to you. Because if you're not doing the doing, if you're not doing the things you got to do, 
like I said, either the health isn't the priority, you just wanted the weight off, or your self-esteem is in the way because your behavior towards yourself reflects your level of self-worth. And I know you hate hearing that, and it hurts me to say it, but I know this not from only watching other people, from living it myself. Don't think I'm a stranger to this. I have struggled with food. I have struggled with alcohol. I've struggled with prescription drugs. And it all boiled down for me to a lack of self-worth. And until I was willing to do the work on recognizing that I feel like a piece of crap on the inside. It doesn't matter what I look like on the outside. On the outside, it looked like I had the whole world by the tail. On the inside, I felt worthless. And nothing was going to change in my life as far as long-term follow-through with healthy lifestyle, taking care of my wellness, taking time for me, making a priority, myself, my life, my health. Nothing was going to change until I learned that I had value. So take home messages. Are you walking the walk or are you talking the talk? Or are you talking the talk and walking the walk? You're saying it's a value and you're living the lifestyle. That's the best option, right? But if you're not, Let's dig in and find out maybe what's going on there. So join us, Laura Preston and myself, for a free online chat. That's what we're calling it. And I love that. It's informal. It's, it's not a seminar. It's not a webinar. It's not a class. It's a chat. It's a chat. And the title of the chat is, Does Your Weight Define Your Worth? It's going to be awesome. Here's what we're going to talk about in here. It's like if you're struggling to lose weight or you're struggling to keep that weight off, or if you've lost a lot of weight, but you're saying, but I didn't get to my goal weight. Oh dear God. Is your life healthier? Are you healthier? Is your uh, quality of life better? But are you defining yourself by the number on that dang scale? I, I swear makes me crazy. So if you're struggling to, to say, I've lost this much weight and I'm thrilled about it and you're following through with the behaviors to keep that weight off, awesome. But if you're not satisfied, even though you've lost a significant amount of weight and you are healthier and you're living a better life, or if you're struggling to lose the weight initially or to keep that weight off, you want to be present for this important chat, right? We're going to talk about the critical value of having a foundation. If you don't have a foundation of self-worth, your house isn't going to be built on very solid foundings, right? If you don't build your house on a solid foundation, it's like the three pigs, right? One builds their house of straw, not a real good foundation. One of sticks, again, not a good solid foundation, but that brick house, boy, that is solid and strong. So where do you land? So join us. We're going to be talking about all those great things. And we're going to talk about the difference between self-confidence and self-worth. They're not at all the same, and it's important to understand the difference. And it's self-worth that determines whether or not you're likely to live a healthy lifestyle. All right, so some invitations for you. Really encourage other people to listen to this podcast. You know, it matters where you get your information. It matters where you get your information. There are a lot of great people who are influencers out there, and some of them have really great and valid information, but a lot of them are just picking up things from here and there, or they're advertising a product they really don't know anything about. Da, 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 da. Don't get fooled. Do your research on the on, on the people. You know, do do they know what they're talking about? And if so, where are they getting their information? I'm not saying the influencers are not amazing in a lot of ways because they are. I am good friends with some of the greatest influences influencers out there in the weight loss world, and I love them. There are others out there who scare me. Quite frankly, scare me. There are a lot of wonderful professionals out there. Are you getting your information from professionals who use the best practices, who get their information from research? Please get it from the people who know what they're talking about. Get great tips 
and and um, strategies from the influencers and from your support groups, but get the concrete knowledge that you need from the experts. All right. So also sign up for the Berry Aftercare Program, man. I'm telling you, it's a daily thing. We got a lot going on. It's daily information. It's daily motivation and inspiration and education. So check it out at berryaftercare.com and sign up. You can go to my website, ConnieStapletonPhD.com, and you can sign up for the free online chat, which is going to be March 5th at 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. So sign up there, and we'll, we will see you then. So um, for now, I'm going to remind you that this is your health, which makes it your responsibility. As Mel Robbins says, nobody's coming. Nobody's coming to get you off the couch, get out there for that walk. Nobody's coming to clean out your refrigerator and put healthy food in there. Your health is your responsibility this day and every day. Thanks for listening to this, you guys. I appreciate your time. I know that you could be doing a lot of other things, but for those who have listened, I know that you are prioritizing your health and your wellness. And I will see you next time on Berry Aftercare, the podcast. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.